Hey, what's up, Eric? A uh, quick demo video for you for your Rogue Arsenal Revan. Uh, my wife has commandeered the garage, so I am bringing it back to where I used to do all my demos, which is the uh, kitchen table. So, uh, here I am, you know, but this is the main point anyway that we wanted to go over, right? Uh, this is a beautiful saber. Uh, this was etched by Dale um, on the outside, and then the inside sleeve that I'll show over in a second was etched by Ryan Heller. And then you have one of Noah Drew's uh, marbles in here for a crystal, and it is amazing. Um, so let's get into it, right? This was uh, installed with a Profi B2. Uh, it's got CC Sabres LED pixels in here. I did do what I told you I was going to do is I came in here and I tried to center up as much as I could on that guy. And I put you a set screw right here. This is the 832 grub screw uh, to hold your blade uh, or just a blade retention. So what we want to do is just first we want to unscrew the handle. Everything's a little bit tight in this guy. The threads are small. Um, so what you want to do is you want to make sure when you're screwing this handle on or even the sleeve, you don't force it. Um, I have found that it, it's easy to force if you're not paying attention and the, the threads will get cross threaded. I didn't do that because I caught it, but it's easy to do if you just jacking this guy on there and start twisting, right? You don't want to do that. The handle has very small threads, as you can see, and then the sleeve is the same. Uh, but here is the marble from Noah Drew. Uh, it's got the holocron in there in the center of it. And man, that thing is gorgeous. Um, came out really nice. Uh, this is the first time I've had a chance to see one of these up close. Um, I've wanted to purchase one a few times, and then actually, after seeing it in person, uh, I probably will, if he's got any openings. Uh, but the sleeve here was etched by Ryan Heller. Uh, you can see that. Circuitry, which is nice, because I started doing that with my chassis. So um, hopefully you like the way the chassis matches the sleeve. But what we want to do is we want to come over here again, and we're gonna unscrew the sleeve. And that comes right off. It is a tight fit. Uh, I made this chassis the exact diameter, or, or the exact idea of the sleeve. Um, so it's super tight, right? Um, so sleeve comes off. What you've got here is you've got a uh, your profi board up top. Easy access to your micro USB if you ever need to get to it, which I don't think you will, but it, if you need to, it's there. Um, I've done most of the programming and not move the board. The only time you need to move the board is if you want to get to your SD card. So you just come up here from the corner and just pop it up with a pair of tweezers or something like that. And you don't have to take the whole thing out. You can just pop the board up like that. Uh, just do what you need to do and then snap it back down into place. This is an extremely tight snap fit. Um, I did choose not to glue it though. Um, I made it super tight. Uh, so everything slides in here and the uh, solder joints do not touch the sleeve, right? So keep that keep in mind though if you decide to <clears throat> Pop this board up and down over time that um, That that the snappiness of this board might lose a little bit It might get a little bit loose and then you'll want to put some e6000 on the on the sides or something like that But for now, it's super tight. You've probably got about a uh, nine or 10 times of popping this board completely in and out before you have to worry about anything like that. And knowing you with Profi, this board is probably gonna stay right where it's at, right? So um, 28 millimeter Smuggler's Outpost Elite Speaker. Uh, you got a removable battery. So spring side here is gonna be the negative side of your battery. Uh, this is a two button setup. So you've got these plunger switches that came in and it came with a saber. Uh, you gave me the, the, the plunger switches were part of the saber and then you also gave me the 3D printed part to hold the uh, actual tactile switches. We'll get to those when we fire it up because there is a way to press those down. Um, I did put this chamber in here with a little bit of JB Weld. So everything is wired in uh, just the way it should be. All of your wires are going through this main brass rod right here this is the hollow one that has the wires um and then there was and then this was just kind of slide in and out right so it only fit in a certain way and then i did i did use a little uh just a little bit of jb well to hold it in place that's what i did there and then the chassis you know the bottom of this crystal chamber is flat uh there is no place for a good chassis retention so i uh did use some glue some ca glue to hold this chassis into the uh into the bottom of the crystal chamber. Now you can see your chassis there. 
you know, Smuggler's Outpost uh, emblem. Um, you've got the different types of circuitry going on. It does say Solo Sabers right here. And then if we flip this around, it's just circuitry over here, right? Now, it was my original intention right here to put a, a small LED strip because I wanted to light up this little uh, gap that you had in your sleeve. I, I, I went through about eight, six, seven, or eight different LED strips that I've got. I bought them off of AliExpress. I liked them because they're super tiny, um, but they don't fit well or act right when you cut them. Uh, you know, they come with, it's a 10 pixel strip. Uh, I only needed five. Uh, every time I cut it where I needed to, uh, the thing just quit working and I fought with that thing. Um, you know, I fought with those for over two hours before I decided that that, that was probably not a good idea. So what I did is I came back in here and I made a, uh, uh, basically just a sleeve to go over the gap that I had for those LEDs. I glued it down, sanded it down and finished it. Um, and, and that's what's going on right there. I opted not to do that. Uh, it just was not working well. I wanted to use some BTF strips at first to get here, but if I were to come all the way down, if I line this up right, come all the way down and hit that gap, I was into my speaker housing um, and the thickness that I needed to go into the chassis to fit those BTF strips, uh, I would have been cutting into my speaker, so that was a no-go. Um, so I abandoned chip over here and, and then just made the crystal light up, right? So let's throw a battery in it. You can see the battery has a bit of a heartbeat. I'm gonna to try to get it close to the camera. We'll go ahead and throw the sleeve on it. Now remember it's tight, but it goes. And then, and then just one more word of warning about this threads. So the threads on the sleeve, they line up and they go in. It's just like butter. Um, the handle will too, if you pay attention and line it up properly in the very beginning, it'll go on just like butter, but you need, just need to make sure that that first thread or two is on point, right? That's what we've got there. I'm going to do some of this demo with the handle off so you can see what the crystal's doing. What could you give me? This is Exegol. Everything. Now your crystal turn red. So you do have motion controls. I just bumped up your sensitivity to about a 3.8. So you've got like a nice heartbeat thing going on with your crystal and it's an orange LED in this. Uh, I, I was trying to catch some different stuff that was going on, um, you know, inside that marble. But when you swing it on, then the crystal turns red, but it still pulsates. Of course, your LED is working like they should. Your aux button when you're holding this and facing you is going to be on your right hand side. We push off. We'll use the auxiliary to go to the next sound font. We're going to skip through these stock fonts even though I did leave them on here for you. On all the stock fonts, when you turn the blade on, your crystal will just mimic your blade. So you got that going on in your blade. You got that going on in your crystal. Speaker super loud. Ancient integration. Ancient integration. So again, this is more of a heartbeat when the blade is off, but it's a it's with a white LED. So this really brings out the color of this marble and the different things that are going on in there. Man, the thing just looks amazing. And we'll go to the next one. Dark Jedi. Dark Jedi. Let's try to change it up a little bit. Now uh, this is solid. Go to the next one. It is the dark saber. <laughs> it's 
you will find your boot sounds on the four fonts that I gave you. You gave me four boot fonts or four boot sounds and I, I spread them out um, evenly over the four fonts that are on your saber, right? So what we're gonna put the handle on, practice what I preach about the threads, there we go. And it goes right on. It just takes a second to make sure it's lined up properly and you'll feel it right away. And you can hear how loud that is, right? Now, a word of warning with these switches. These are very low profile plunger switches. So your auxiliary, if, if it's facing you, you can actually tell which one is your auxiliary because your auxiliary uh, sticks up just a hair further than your, uh, than your activation. If I can f show you that on camera, that's your auxiliary switch. And then uh, here is your activation switch. So, you're, and that's just the way they were made. Um, your activation switch, I'm finding that if you have a thumbnail, that's gonna help you, right? We're gonna throw a blade in it. So I got a one inch test blade here. I'll throw this guy in, lock it down with the blade retention. I'm just tapping auxiliary to blast the duplex. Hit my tapping my activation to turn it off. Now to get to your uh, to get to your music track on each font, you'll just hold down the power button for a second and then let go. Dark side of the force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be. And then again to turn it off, you do the same thing. My mentor taught me everything about the Force. I'll let this go for a second. Even the nature of the dark side. You do the same thing to turn it off, you just hold it down for a second and let go, right? Stock, stock fonts. But we'll circle back around now. Ancient integration, activation. I gave you a nice unstable blade for that guy. Hopefully you can hear how loud that is. I gave you battle mode, so if you hit the blade, or if you hit the saber, it'll initiate blade lockup like this. You can see it right here. And it will stay like that, and it will stay like that until you pull away from it. Just like that. And you've got that on every font. It is the dark saber. See it right here. And just pull away. And then we'll take the uh, we'll take the blade out. So everything's working like it should. Uh, when you go to put your blade in, make sure you put it in there pretty tight. Uh, and it's got just a, the tiniest bit of diameter change it's trying to get past before it hits those pins. Not a big deal, you can push right through it. Alright, so we'll just go ahead and unscrew this handle. like that. See your crystals kind of pulsating there. Uh, that is set up, the crystal is set up to do that continuously when the blade is off. However, I programmed in your config for all that to turn off within uh, like eight minutes if nobody's messing with it, right? Single LED pulsing like that, it's not pulling very much power at all. And we'll take this 
We'll take this uh, sleeve off and then come in here from uh, the positive side, which is by the speaker. And pull it out just like that with our fingers. And that, sir, is your saber. Um, you know, let me know if you got any questions or if I didn't cover something. Or, uh, and if everything looks good to you, I will have this out in the mail to you uh, tomorrow. All right. Thanks, man.